Johnny. Johnny Dollar. Danny Nixon, Johnny. Mono Guarantee Insurance. Hi, Danny. What's up? Remember Amos Crutchfield? Sure, former city attorney. Right. Retired in a blaze of glory a couple of years ago after he clamped a lid on the policy racket. Well, he's also the one who had Skimpy Dingle sent up, Johnny, about four years ago. Dingle? Yeah, Peter Foreman Dingle. Sure, I remember him. Well, he's out. That soft-headed parole board let him off early, fell for that good behavior bit. Oh, too bad. You bet it is, because you know what it means. Do I? Well, you don't remember what he said to you in Crutchfield when the judge hit him with the sentence? Oh, look, Danny, not one of those courtroom threats in a thousand. Oh, no? Huh? Well, that's not the way Crutchfield thinks, and you ask me, I agree with him. And what's more, Johnny... Yeah? We just happened to have written a policy on Crutchfield's life, 75000 Oh? Yeah. Well, want to go talk to him? Okay. <laughs> CBS Radio Network brings you Mandel Kramer and the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Mono Guarantee Insurance Company, Home Office, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the skimpy matter. <laughs> Expense account item one. 480 for a tank full of gas for my car. Instead of heading straight for Mr. Crutchfield's home over in Lakewood, I made a slight detour to the local parole office. And you know something? I'd have been perfectly content to stay there and forget all about Amos Crutchfield because the parole officer I talked to turned out a little different than I'd expected. We got the official notice of Peter Foreman Dingle's release just this morning, Mr. Dollar. It's uh, Johnny, Miss Barlow. Sure. My name's just plain old Mary. Well, now, the name may be plain, but... Uh, yes? <clears throat> perhaps we'd better talk about uh, Skimpy Dingle first. Hmm? Well, there isn't really too much to tell you because he hasn't reported into it. You have no local address for him? No. Well, that's too bad. That was really my reason for stopping by. Uh, speaking of addresses, though, Mary... Uh... Well, I'll be glad to let you know <clears throat> as soon as he does check in. Good. And meantime, Johnny... Yes? Be careful, huh? Why do you say that? Because of what he said in court. That could apply to you as much as to Mr. Crutchfield, you know. Oh, I doubt it. Would you like to act as my bodyguard? You know something, Johnny? You're pretty fresh. <laughs> My mother... I know, oh, I know, I know. But uh, did she tell you how come a man like Skimpy Dingle got out so soon? I mean, after all, the parole board is a pretty intelligent group. His older brother, Johnny. Hmm? Percy Dingle. He's a psychologist of sorts, the, the bookworm type. Oh? It's Percy who kept Skimpy out of jail on a lot of earlier lesser charges. I see. And you think he convinced the parole board? <laughs> I'm sure of it. A man like that who can... Toss around seven-syllable technical terms can be pretty convincing. Apparently, it's worked before. Maybe. Do you have his address? Mm, yes, I think so. Let's see. Oh, yes, here it is. The Kingston Plaza on Walnut Avenue. Good. But why bother with him? You won't like him. A couple of reasons, Mary. If Skimpy is in these parts, Percy ought to know where. Mm, that's true. What's the second reason, Johnny? Well, if Percy, a psychologist, has any influence over him, and apparently he does... Maybe together we can show him the light. Thanks, Mary. I'll see you again. Some 20 minutes later, I pulled up in front of Crutchfield's home in the pretty little community of Lakewood. Parked in front of it was one of the new compact cars. I should have taken a better look at it or at least let the air out of the tires. Instead...
have to stay alert. Don't let drowsiness slow you down. Perk up. Perk up with no dose. The safe way to stay alert without harmful stimulants. Remember, when you're driving, working, studying, and monotony makes you feel drowsy. Perk up. Perk up with no dose. No dose. Unconscious Amos Crutchfield was still alive. Whoever had done it had broken into one of the windows there in the den, fired the shots, and left by the window all in a matter of seconds. One of the bullets had creased the old man's skull, but how the other missed his heart, I'll never know. As I carefully lifted him up onto a couch, I heard the car I'd seen pull away. I cussed myself for not having made note of its license, but I hadn't. And to try to pick it out from all the hundreds, perhaps thousands, like it in that area would be impossible. Come on, come on, operator, come on. Operator. Operator, listen, my name is Johnny Dollar. Oh, yes, Mr. Dollar. I'm at the home of Mr. Amos Crutchfield, and we need a doctor here right away. It's an emergency. Well, I believe that Dr. Edwards usually takes care of him. All right, call him, get him over here, and then get hold of the police. Police? Yes. Tell them to get here immediately. A few minutes later, Dr. Franklin Edwards arrived, looked over Mr. Crutchfield, bandaged him up, Gave him a tetanus shot and a sedative while the old man remained unconscious. I feel confident he'll recover, Mr. Dollar. Good. Now, Dr. Edwards... I must say, though, he was very lucky. Another inch to the left, and that one bullet would have snuffed out his life. I don't doubt it. Now, listen, Doctor. Yes? Uh, I've told you exactly what happened. Yes? Would you uh, stick around and tell the police when they get here? Well, yes, of course. I I'll be glad to, but... Well, are you leaving now, Mr. Dollar? You bet I am. Knowing the inadequacy of the police force in that quaint, quiet, ordinarily peaceful little town, I realized it was up to me to find Skimpy Dingle and fast. And his brother Percy back in Hartford was the one who might be able to give me some information. But exactly two blocks later, as I approached an intersection with a stop sign on the cross street, a car came barreling out of it and heading straight for me. The devil's the matter with you? Didn't you see the stop sign? Skimpy, put down that gun. Oh, uh, yeah? Well, here's for you! felt like as Skimpy sent four shots at me at close range before I could even make a grab for my own gun. Did you ever see a magician that put somebody inside a basket and then ran swords through it? By some miracle, only one of the slugs grazed me, took a bite out of my left arm, enough to draw blood. I tore a piece off my shirt, improvised a pad to stop the bleeding, then drove back to my apartment in Hartford. After a quick cleanup on the arm and a Boy Scout type dressing I hoped would stop any chance of infection, I put on a clean shirt and reached for the telephone. Hmm. Uh, just a minute. Be right there. As soon as I get this jacket on. Oh. Coming. Coming. Who is it? Mr. Dollar? That's right. Who are you? My name is Dingle. Dingle? Percival Dingle. All I have to say is you better be alone, Mr. Dingle. Hey, what is this? Come inside. I beg your pardon. Okay, so you're Percy Dingle, hmm? Yes. I can see that my brother was right. Oh? That gun you're holding. You're a killer, aren't you? I am. Are you kidding? And this, this completely unnecessary strong-arm welcome into your apartment. Just take it easy, Mr. Dingle. Take it easy? After this sort of treatment? I had hoped you might be the sort of person with whom I could ration it. You'd be surprised at how reasonable I can be when the occasion warrants it. And I assure you, this one does. All right, then sit down, Mr. Dingle. Sit right there. Thank you. But uh, won't you put that gun away, please? Hmm? Oh, sorry. Until I could be certain that you'd come here alone, Mr. Dingle. You were expecting someone with me? Well, I wasn't expecting you. Now, what's it all about? Well, when you speak gently as now, you do appear to be a man of intelligence. Well, I thank you. And I hope that I can reason with you, Mr. Dollar. Awaken some understanding in your heart. Some well-deserved sympathy for one who has been less fortunate than yourself. Like whom? As if I need to ask. Peter, my younger brother. Skimpy, hmm? Well, if you choose to call him by that rather disparaging sobriquet... I choose. And I'm afraid you're not going to get much sympathy out of me, Dingle. That brother of yours is riding for a fall about as hard and as fast as he can. 
He was a hot-blooded, hot-headed young tough when he got himself in trouble a few years back, and I have good reason to think that he hasn't changed one bit. Now, if you'll excuse me... Will you listen to me, please? Afraid it won't do you any good. Or him. Peter has been in trouble more than once. I know it just as well as you do. But do you know why? <sighs> All right. Suppose you tell me. Simply because of his lack of the education that you and I were fortunate enough to receive. Mm. And the guidance the constructive behavioristic influences that inevitably are part of Oh, sure. The social adaptability and relationships that are so necessary to conformation with our scheme of living. Didn't Skimpy have just as good a chance for an education of some kind as you did? Yes, but he rebelled against it. And who was to tell a child what the lack of it would do to him? The social and emotional instability it would engender in him. The hatred of such as you who were contributory to his incarceration in that prison. Well, his uh, incarceration apparently didn't do him much good. Why do you say that? And what about his hatred for the lawyer, Amos Crutchfield? You and he, Mr. Dollar. What? You and Mr. Crutchfield, the particular two people he feels have persecuted him. You two are the ones, and the only ones who can help him now. You must be joking. I'm very serious. I'm a psychologist, Mr. Dollar. Uh, so I understand. I know the human mind. More important, I know Peter's mind. Oh, you do? Then why haven't you made some attempt to get him off of this crime kick? All of his earlier offenses were relatively minor. Little more than the mischievous pranks of any youngster. Oh, they were. Mm -hmm. But this last one that sent him to prison. Mr. Daly, you must believe me, because I know what I'm talking about. Well? That was the fulcrum that finally provided me with enough leverage that enabled me to convince him of the error of his ways. Oh, you think he's convinced now? Well, isn't the fact that he was released for good behavior sufficient proof that he's made definite progress? Isn't it proof that with a little help, the kind of help and understanding you can give him, Mr. Dowler? I? Yes, you. Particularly you. Because up until now, Mr. Dowler, you have been a symbol of only one thing to him. Persecution. I see. And what about Amos Crutchfield? <laughs> That doddering old fool, you must be joking. Do you think that he could understand that a man so narrowed in his regard for a boy who made a mistake that he persuaded the judge to impose a completely unjust sentence on Peter? Do you think that a prejudiced, bigoted old man like him could be of any help? Unjust sentence, hmm? Yes, Mr. Dollar. It was utterly unjust. Uncalled That's for. That's right. Instead of five to seven with time off, the judge should have given him 20 solid or maybe 30... You can't mean that. Look, I've known this kind before, Mr. Dingle. I've known a lot more of them than you ever have or ever will. If only you were a psychologist, Mr. Dollar. Uh, maybe I am. Just the purely practical kind. Not with any head up in the clouds, full of lovely, impractical theories, the way yours seem to be. Or is it? What? Or is all this just a bluff? Now, wait, sir. Because I... the more I think about it, Percy, the more convinced I am that, one, your brother is rotten clear through. No. That, two, we got out of prison only because a smart pitch like this one you're handing me caught the parole board in a weak moment. No. They saw the wisdom in what I told them. I think you're all wrong in what you say about Skimpy, about any chance of his ever straightening out, and I think you know it. I know that if you will see him, we'll talk to him, Mr. Oh, come off it. Tell me the truth. Isn't all of this just a little stunt that you've dreamed up to lead me to him? To get me in range of his gun so that he can polish me off the way he tried to kill Mr. Crutchfield? What? You are saying that he, Peter, or Skimpy, whatever you wish to call him, that he actually tried to kill a man? No, I don't believe it. All right, then you go and see Crutchfield in here. Have a look at this. If I can get my sleeve up, move this bandage a bit. Here. There you are. Mr. Delta? Yes, one of his bullets just a few minutes ago. What do you think of your poor, misguided little brother now? All right, all right. It, it, it happens simply because he feels that you not only have, but will continue to persecute him. Sure. But once he learns otherwise, finds out that you were on his side or willing to help him, oh, please, Mr. Dowler, see him, talk with him. Believe me, sir, if you'll do that, will you? Please. You know where he is, where I can find him? Yes. And we'll do as I ask. I'll see him for only one reason, Mr. Dingle. Yes? To turn him over to the police. No. No, Mr. Dollar, I couldn't do that to him. So unless you agree to talk to him first, to at least try to understand him, I won't tell you where he is. All right, then we'll have to find him ourselves, and we will. Goodbye, Mr. Dingle. Mr. Dollar, let... Let me do this. Yes? I'll go to him. 
I'll tell him that you're willing to see him. I'll tell him why. And then, if his reaction is the right, the proper one, I'll telephone you where he'll be, waiting for you, to listen to you. You really honestly believe there's a cure for him, don't you? Yes. All right, then go ahead and contact him. We'll see. Percy Dingle when he left. But the bullet wound in my arm was really kicking up. And I felt kind of groggy. Maybe that's why I let him talk me into a pointless meeting with his brother. Or was it possible that it hadn't been Skimpy who tried to kill Mr. Crutchfield, that it was somebody else? No, no. And I was sure, absolutely sure, that it was Skimpy there in the compact car who'd taken the shots at me. And yet? Uh, but I was groggy and I, I wasn't thinking straight. So after napping for a couple of hours, I uh, got up, poured myself a drink, and ordered some dinner sent over from a nearby restaurant. That's item two, by the way, six dollars plus a dollar tip. By then, I began to feel a little better. Hmm. Johnny Dollar. This is Percy Dingle, Mr. Dollar. Well? I told you my faith in him is entirely warranted. You think so, hmm? I'm certain of it. More certain than ever. He's waiting for you now. I'll bet he is. You'll find him in room four on the ground floor of a rooming house at 1217 North Chava. Okay, Mr. Dingle. I'll run on over and see him. And Mr. Dollar. Yeah? Thank you. So I drove to 1217 North Chava. Apparently, Skimpy was the only one home in the rather decrepit-looking old boarding house. Through the open window of his room, I could see him slowly pacing the floor, his head down, thoughtfully, a finger to his lips, the perfect picture of a repentant man. Nonetheless, after entering the building before knocking on his door, from well at one side of the door frame, I drew my gun. Yes, who is it? Johnny Dollar. Oh, yes, I'm glad you've come. Just in case. No, no. No, you didn't need to, to kick it open, Mr. Dollar. Can you blame me for taking no chances, Skimpy? No, sir, I guess I can after what I... Oh, look, you can uh, you can put your gun away, too, honest. Sure, why not? But just remember that it'll still be handy. Look, you got to believe me. You got no worries, Mr. Dollar. You see, my brother was here all afternoon, and he... Well, he, he told me about talking to you. Well, then? Listen, Dollar, and I mean it. I was wrong, see? I was all wrong. I mean, when I tried to shoot you there in your car, and I'm I'm awful glad I missed. Honest. Well, I'm kind of glad you're such a lousy shot, but uh, what about Mr. Crutchfield? Oh, I only hope and pray the old guy will live. Don't you see, Dollar, I was wrong. I mean, all along, too, but I didn't know it, you see? I mean, I couldn't believe it. Until I seen you come in the door here just now and and to, to help me, just like my brother promised you would. Skimpy, I promised him only one thing, that if he'd tell me where to find you, I'd turn you over to the police. No, 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 no. No, look, you, 
Don't you understand? I understand your brother's living in a dream world. No, no, Dollar. That, that isn't what I mean. What do you mean? Well, I mean he is. Sure, sure he is. You better make up your mind. <laughs> well, I mean that's why the dope was stupid enough to get you here. Right here. Where I can't miss. <laughs> You're still a lousy <laughs> That was a big mistake, Skimpy. Okay. Okay, so I... So I missed you. Get up on your feet. Okay, okay. You... <laughs> you win, I guess. Sit down over there. A chair against the wall. Okay, okay. What else can I do? Not a thing. Your little act wasn't good enough. Now stay there while I pick up this gun of yours. Don't bother, Dollar. What? Don't move another step, you hear me? Don't move. I see. Yeah. You see. But now face around the other way. Go on! I had a feeling you might get rough when I pulled that gun. So I had this other one, see? And, Dollar, it's aimed right for the back of your head! Oh, Mr. Dollar, I, how did you... Oh, then you... You saw me outside this window. That's right. And you knew that I would pull this trigger before he... Before he could... After you'd seen what he was up to? After hearing what he said? Pussy, I hoped you would. My own brother. Did I kill him, Mr. Dollar? No, Pussy. Just like him, you're a pretty lousy shot. Skimpy? And without his brother's support anymore, he'll be lucky if he ever gets out of the pen. Percy? Well, I hope he never forgets his lesson in practical psychology. Expense account total... $10.80? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here's our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, a very bad case of not knowing enough about your friends. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Do you like a car with plenty of pep? A car with reserve power for safe passing? Most good drivers do, but they don't like to pay extra for premium gasoline. Listen, in three out of five cars, regular price Sinclair Dino gasoline matches performance of premium gasolines. Save up to four cents a gallon. Almost anywhere you see the Sinclair dinosaur sign, you can save up to four cents a gallon with Dino. Drive with care and buy... Sinclair Dino Gasoline. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is written by Jack Johnstone, produced and directed by Fred Hendrickson, music supervision by Ethel Huber, Johnny Dollar is played by Mandel Kramer. Also featured in our cast were Rosemary Rice, Larry Haynes, Jack Arthur, Melville Ruick, and William Redfield. Sound patterns by Walter Otto. Technical direction, Michael Shoskis. Be sure to join us next week, same time, same station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Stuart Metz speaking. Get in the game with Phil Rizzuto Sports Time every night but Sunday on the CBS Radio Network. You've been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com.